Hi everybody! During the development of our point-and-click adventure game Whispers of Prague, we played around with the idea of creating some scenes in complete darkness, so the main character would need to acquire night vision goggles to navigate the scene. This idea was eventually discarded, but the effect itself isn't entirely bad, as you can see right now. Let's take a look how such a shader works. So once again, I will be creating a shader on the image we have in the scene as Sprite2D. However, if you wanted to apply this shader to the entire screen to simulate the use of night vision in a 3D game, for instance, the principle would be the same as in the tutorial of the CRT effect, which I reference in the description of this video. Okay, so I'll create a new scene as usual. Uh, create new scene to the scene, let's call it night. All right, and insert the prepared texture into it. Where is it? Here. Okay, select and in the inspector, we will fix the position to 0, zero and set uh, cancel centered on the offset. Very well, here it is. And of course, I need to add a new material that would be shader material. Click it and add a new shader that can be called night GD shader canvas item and let's put it to the folder shaders and create and click to open in the editor. Okay, so let's get rid of everything that won't be needed. Only the fragment function will remain in the code. Vertex and white. Cool. So first, I'll add the usual code for reading the current texture pixel and displaying it. There will be plenty of modifications and filters between reading and displaying, but we'll get to that step by step. And because the night vision effect will also require a darkened edge, it will again be beneficial to shift the origin to the center, so our edge will be nicely symmetrical. Ok, let's insert the following code. Like to UV is UV shifted to the center, so I'll subtract 0.5 and now we need to fix the aspect ratio of course, so first I'll uh, detect the resolution which can be simply calculated as 1 divided by the internal variable texture pixel size and now the aspect ratio, so UVX would be multiplied by resolution x divided by resolution y. Great. One more thing, I'll prepare the time variable as we will need it later for some effects like uh, the noise and flickering and so on. Very well, let's read the pixel as I announced before. So it would be uh, the function texture applied on the current texture which is this image we can see and the uh, UV coordinates and I need to use the original UV here because we want to display the image as it is not to shift it somehow to the center and of course texture texture function returns vector 4 but we are working with vector 3 so let's use only the RGB components and ignore the alpha channel and finally, we will assign that to the internal variable color, which is vector 4, so it would be uh, composed of our color and one for the alpha value. Very well. So far, nothing has changed in the image, but I'll fix that right away. I'll start with the green filter, which is typical for night vision. And because the human eye is sensitive to different color shades differently, We'll use the so-called luminance vector, which you might remember from the video about setting brightness, contrast, saturation and similar effects. So, I'll add two uniform parameters, luminance and base color. 
both will be vector 3 like an RGB color. Let's do it here. Uniform vector 3 luminance. Let's give it a hint source color so we will have uh, a color picker in the inspector and these values. I think I explained these values in the other video. It's basically the luminance vector that is that gives us the best result in this uh, color model we use. Uh, 0, 8, 20. <clears throat> but of course, since it's a uniform parameter, we can change it to something else if you are not satisfied with that. And the second one, uniform vector 3, base color. Eh. Color again, source color and the default value would be something like a shade of green. So let's put 0.2 for the red channel, 1 for green and 0.4 for blue. Okay, and we can see it right here. This is our base color. Very well. And the code for using these vectors. Since we'll be changing the base color over time later to achieve a screen flickering effect, we will assign this vector to a temporary vector called vision color. This is because the base color is a uniform parameter, so it cannot be changed in the code. Very well, let's uh, do it here. Here, vector 3, as I said, vision color is for the time being just base color. It will be uh, modified later and the color vector would be the result of a dot product, sorry, of the color and the luminance multiplied by the vision color. Okay, and that's it. Now we can see, now we can see that everything is in the shades of green. I think we can go ahead and add one more uniform parameter for brightness, which we will use to multiply the final color. So let's do it here. Uniform float brightness with a hint range and the initial value would be two. And let's the hint range change to from point one to 10 and the step 0.01 and as I said we'll multiply uh, the final color here it is color times brightness it should be brighter yes it is great at this point we can play with the colors and brightness but we haven't achieved a true night vision effect yet we'll need to add dark edges noise and flickering I'll start with the noise and since I want all the parameters of this effect to be adjustable, I'll add a new uniform parameter called noise level. Let's just make more space and here, uniform <coughs> float noise level with the hint range and the initial value 0.5. It would be from 0 to 1 and step uh, 0. Point, uh, zero 0.01. Okay, next I'll need a function that returns a pseudo random number to create a noise effect. This can be done using either a noise texture or a function that can generate this pseudo randomness. This time I decided to use a function that I've used several times before. So I'll just copy it here to avoid unnecessary mistakes when rewriting. Okay, let's put it here. Yeah, I just fixed the missing tab here. Okay, this is the function. So now let's look at the code in the fragment function. First, I'll create the noise and then I'll animate that noise over time. So it would be here float, let's call it grain and it would be the function hash 11. By the way, the name means that we have one input parameter as a float and the result is one dimensional parameter as well, a float again. So we will pass uh, uvx 
and the result would be increased by UV Y to give it some more uh, randomness. Okay, and now of course we need to add it to the color with the animation effect as I said. Let's do it. Color plus increased would be increased by another hash function with the parameter uh, grain multiplied by time. Okay. And since we have the adjustable noise level, let's use it here. Noise level and wait for it. Okay. I would say the result is quite clear and bright, don't you think? I'm not sure how this noise will look after compressing the video on YouTube, but in real time it looks very decent. The overall effect will darken later once we add more features, but for now we might reduce the noise level to avoid straining our eyes. Let's do it here, put it down to 0.08, yeah, I guess it's better. So. Now it's time to add the so-called vignette effect. What is it? In photography, a vignette effect is an artistic darkening of the photo's corners compared to its, to its center. Photographers often use it as a creative effect to draw the viewer's attention directly to the subject, as in portrait or product photography. In our case, we simulate the edges of goggles, though uh, through which we don't get a perfectly rectangular image, but rather the corners are clipped. So, for this enhancement, we'll create three uniform parameters right away, so that we can adjust the horizontal edge, vertical edge and overall intensity of this cropping. Let's do it here. So first, uniform float. Eh. Infinite level hint range and the initial value would be 0.4 and yes we can leave it like this and now the edges uh, uniform float ed ed yes. <laughs> edge x again let's say hint range and the initial value 0.75 Okay, this is correct. And finally the edge Y. Uniform float edge Y with the similar values and the initial value would be 4. And I think this one can be increased to about 6. Alright, so now the actual code. We'll calculate the edge position and apply the smooth step function to it to achieve a smooth transition from green to black. I will do it uh, here after the noise. So vec2, let's call it edge, would be UV multiplied by vec2 uh, with our values from uniform parameters edge x and edge y. Okay, <coughs> and again we need to adjust the final color. This time we'll be multiplying to cancel out the black, black edge areas. <clears throat> so it would be multiplied by, as I said, smooth step with these um, parameters. Length of the edge vector. Then the second boundary would be one. And finally we will apply it on the vignette level. Let's wait for it. Okay, this isn't quite what we wanted. Just using the UV vector alone isn't enough, but if we multiply this vector by itself, the vignette should, be, uh, should expand properly. Here it is, so multiplied by UV. Let's wait. Okay, I guess we are almost there. Let's add one more multiplication. UV. All right, now it's looking good. And since the entire image has darkened, we can revert the noise level back to its original value here. Okay, so what's left? The image could flicker a bit more to better simulate the imperfect result characteristic of night vision. I'll add one last uniform parameter and name it flickering level here. 
uniform float uh, flickering <laughs> level with uh, in range and the initial value 0.1 okay <coughs> and it's usage in the code <coughs> let's scroll down to the fragment function and do it here we'll finally uh, use the vision color so it would be this uh, vector 3 let's call it flicker would be vector 3 and now we'll be shifting the level of the green channel because we are actually not interested in red and blue so if we want to add the flicker vector to the base vector base color we need to assign 0 to red component now we will do something about the green component and to give it some pseudo random changes let's apply a hash, ta a hash function on the time value multiply that by the flickering level our final uh, uniform parameter and again blue component shouldn't change so we'll add zero all right and here to apply that base color <coughs> would be increased by the flicker vector yeah again i'm not sure uh, if you can see it on youtube but just in front of me it's flickering and i would say that uh, we are finished so as we can see this code changes the green component of the vector over time if we were to set the base color right here to something other than a green shade we would likely need to adjust this sum accordingly uh, this vector i mean However, for the basic effect, this approach is entirely sufficient. Okay, uh, let me just show everything now. And as usual, we have so many parameters here in the inspector that uh, we can practically adjust everything related to this effect. So for instance, if we don't like uh, the flickering, let's turn it off by moving this flickering level to zero. Now it's not. Or we can... Uh, completely um, cancel out the noise level putting it to zero and for example this one is not too bright let's increase brightness or what if we want the effect without edges let's put it back and increase the vignette level to the maximum now it's too bright let's decrease brightness all right that's not bad let's put it back one two thank you for watching I believe this effect will find application in a wide range of games and there are certainly ways to further enhance it. It could be combined with other imperfections like CRT screen effects such as image blur or slowly scrolling scan lines. Anyway, I wish you a great success with your projects, take care and see you in the next video.